Power half hour. Today, our very own Mr. Atish Chand. We're looking forward to learning uh, truly who Atish is. Where did he come from? How did he start this whole journey? And well, first and foremost, just want to thank you for all the value that you provide to our team. It's, you know, and not many people uh, would do what you do. And you're very generous with your time and you're very generous with everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Without further ado, Atish Chad. <laughs> hey guys, um, thanks, John. I mean, you know what? It's, uh, you know, we talked about the thing that we're looking for in life, right? And uh, when I started in real estate, um, I was looking for community. I really was. I was looking for a place to call home. And uh, even in my bio, I got a chance to rewrite that. So I want to I, I thank your EAs for, uh, uh, for uh, putting, you know, just pushing me to kind of rewrite that. And I wrote that and I went, you know what, EXP is home, right? It's, uh, it's a place where it makes sense for me. So, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's start up with, what do you want to know? I, I want to know everything. I want to know, um, you know, wh what did you do before real estate? Uh, yes. So I come from a corporate sales background. Uh, I worked for the likes of Rogers, Telus, Apple. Um, you know, I was, uh, I, I actually started here in Burnaby as my first job. Um, I used to do retail sales as well. So I was actually in the cell phone business for the longest time. Mm. Um, and what you see today, it's really funny. One of my stories uh, is what you see today, which is Monero's payment systems, you know, the wireless. Yes. Um, yeah, interact and and all of this stuff. I built the first version of that at uh, at a retail store way back when. Wow. Um, we used to do it off of analog phones way back when. So it was kind of, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a tech head and I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I, I was I was even talking to somebody the other day, and I was like, hi, I totally remember programming in DOS, and they're like, Atish, don't tell people you programmed in DOS. Like <laughs> that's old, right? And I was like, no, man. Like you know, most of this stuff it all comes from there. Right, it all comes from the basics. So anyway, I've always been a tech head. So um, I started out working in a call center, which really helped me to tune my speaking skills, mm. right? My ability to just hear people. Uh, that was a really big moment for me. I spent uh, probably about two years on the phones. Uh, then they hired, then they moved me into the hiring manager role. So. I took a call center that was about 120, 130 people to like almost 500 people over the course of a couple of years. So that really helped me with my recruiting side of things. And it really helped me to make sure I understood what was the right skill set to make that particular job work. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I applied for a job uh, to be a sales rep and the director of sales and I just hit it off. We spent like an hour together strategizing around what he needs to do with the region. And all of a sudden, I got the job as a sales manager. And I was running British Columbia um, for the small business team at TELUS. Right. And then all of that stuff has happened. And I ended up moving to Toronto for five years. So I lived there for a bit. Oh, yeah. 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 And that, get, uh, that gave me an adventure in working for Apple. So I worked for them for about a year. Oh. Uh, and then I transitioned back um, for. The most important reason, which was uh, family and specifically my mom's health. And, uh, you know, the story about me getting into real estate is really funny because on the day, so it was my one year anniversary. I, I worked for Pure Later for about a year and I was at my one year anniversary, right? So I'm about to like, yay, one year, congratulations, right? So I'm like, cool. And then so uh, right before that one year anniversary, I sent, I got my license, right? So sent out, you know, you send out a big notice. Hey, everybody, I got my real estate license, right? So anyway, that all happened on the one year anniversary of my job there. I got laid off oh. with 2,500 other people. Whoa. Yeah. So it was like a massive layoff went across the country, right? And I was like, okay, this sucks. Like what? this really sucks, right? <laughs> But uh, best thing ever that happened to me was that evening I had a listing appointment, right? Mm -hmm. So close that bad boy. It was, you know, because burn the bridges, right? There was no turning back, right? There was no more safety net because my plan was to do real estate part-time 
yeah. while I was a cheerleader, right? Yeah. I was making okay money. So I was like, I'll do this thing and I'll make really good money, yeah. right? Sure. The universe had a totally different plan for me. And it was like, nope, you're done. Get over to this real estate thing. The universe made it easy for you because a lot of people, okay. they, they uh, are reluctant to burn the bridges and finally they burn it themselves. Hey, you yeah. know what? The universe just burned it for you. So you're like, okay, good. Yeah, I'm in. Like, what do you want me to do now, right? So how long so, ago was this, Atish? So this was, I started real estate 2016. Uh, okay. It was, yeah, my first listing was November of 2016. Oh, it was actually wow. a good friend of mine that used to work with me when I was at Telus. Uh, uh, and he was my first listing. And uh, it, it was a great experience, right? Because the market was still, we were listed for 475. So the market was still hot. Yeah. Right, not not calm like 2017, 2018 kind of brought on, but we ended up with nine offers, took wow. the top offer, uh, and ended up selling at 492. Right, and still to this day, I, I totally think it's an undervalued piece because it's penthouses, right? So it was a penthouse that I sold, which are always I, notoriously difficult to uh to price, I think, in my yeah. opinion, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was great. A great experience uh, with my friends, great experience in the transition, right? Because um, I am one of those guys that just cold turkey, we're done. Let's go this way. Yeah. Right? So I enjoy that. So a ton of experience, call center, working for mm -hmm. Apple, being a tech guy and pure later. You've had a lot of work experience. And uh, well, Atish has three kids. And um, <laughs> this guy is so crazy that he had his third kid at how old? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so shot of, uh, I'm 48 this year, so I was 46 when we had shot of. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, yeah, congratulations, yeah. first and foremost, having three kids. I know I have two, it's already crazy. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why you do it, but you did it. <laughs> congratulations. Oh, but okay, you want to hear the rationale? This was the most funniest rationale. So sure. most of you know my wife, Ash, and um, her and I had a really big conversation because when we had our, you know, our teenage kids in our 30s, we were like, yeah, yeah, that's it, we're done, right? Um, but her and I sat down and we looked at the model and I'll, I'll say it hands down. If we weren't in EXP and with the model, hmm. we would have probably not had number three. Wow. So this yeah. kid was born out of EXP realty. Totally. <laughs> I'll tell Glenn totally. that. Tell Glenn that. That's hilarious. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have no issues with that actually. Uh, but it, it was, it was a really big dialogue for her and I, cause we really were like, hmm. do we really want another one? Right. And, it, yeah. and for those of you that know me a little bit, I'm a big planner. N nothing happens by accident. I'm very methodical about a lot of things. Yeah. John knows this as well. We're, we're analytics at our core. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so you knew you knew the model would work for you. You knew um, that this model will give you equity and build it for the free, for the future and be able to step back at some point. Right. And yeah. that's why you did it. Um, so let's back up a little bit. When you first mm -hmm. started, when you when the bridge was burned for you, you know, obviously guns blazing 2016, but then it got quiet a little bit. Any struggles during that time, first one, two, three years? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, well, it, it was really funny because when I first started, um, I got my, you know, got my first listing within three weeks, it was sold. Um, but then I didn't get paid till February. Yeah. Right. So three month lag. And so for those of you that have a job right now, my mindset was every two weeks I get a check. Yeah. That stopped, right? Like I got a severance pay from my old job, which was like a month only and that was it. So I went into Christmas very stressed, right? Not having the type of stuff that we can do. And I had to really shape my mind around, okay, the more I hustle, the more I'll make, right? And I got to create a consistent paycheck. So 2017, I actually did well. Um, I'd say we closed the deal once a month easily in 2017, right? But I was taking whatever I could get, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I started out with Remax, which was great of, you know, all the praises to the brand and some of the people that were there. But it was interesting because I was downtown. So prices in 2017 for condos, no, nowhere close to what they are today, right? So everything was in the four or 500 range. Some of the stuff was six, 700. And that's the stuff I was getting. I was started out with the mindset of, you know, the more I work, the more I learn. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Great mindset, right? And so I used to do open houses, back-to-back uh, -back open houses, Saturday, Sundays, right? Um, and then I do open houses on weekdays, oh, wow. right? 
in the evenings because then you were like, you know what, I, I got to fill this pipeline because I got two kids and a wife to feed, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, you, that, that'll motivate the crap out of anybody. I mean, those yeah. of you guys are young or don't have any children, have one. <laughs> It'll <laughs> change the world. It'll uh, get so you to be motivated, guys. Yeah, that's for sure. So, yeah. you know, to do one deal a month, I mean, starting out as a brand new agent, that's not easy. Where do no. those transactions come from? Uh, so uh, it was funny because my first transaction was my family friend. And after that, I got nothing from friends and family. So a lot of my deals came from open houses. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Open houses, a lot guys. of my deals. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was the time when you had, you know, 15, 20 people come through. Yeah. And I met a couple of agents that were very deliberate in the way mm -hmm. they asked questions deliberate in the, you know, the people that you had sign in. And then you have to have a really good cadence on following up with people the next day. Like that yeah. was critical, right? So you'd work, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, open houses, collect all your leads. You know, if you lucked out with 30, 40 leads, Monday morning, that's all I was doing. And then, you know, the first quarter, that's how I did it. So Jan, Feb, March, that's how I did uh -huh. it. And I realized by Monday, they'd already bought something. Uh -huh. So Saturday night, I was calling people then. Sunday night, I was calling people, following up and been like, wow. hey, let's let, let's do something. And um, I invested in a bunch of online leads in 2017, 2018. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, because uh, I was, you know, for me, scalability is very important, right? Yes. I am looking to be able to build a business um, really, really fast and to really amazing scale. So I was like, okay, let's see what we can do. So I spent a bunch of money with bold leads, uh, in 2017, um, frothing the realm of, uh, I don't know, something like eight or 9,000 leads, didn't close a single one. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a com combination of two things. One was I wasn't good at online leads because I didn't believe it, gotcha. okay? but I invested the money because everybody else was like, online leads, that's the way to go. Right. Right. And uh, number two was um, I didn't really know how to evaluate the vendors for online leads and we'll get into that as we go through because that was a big learning curve for me in 2019 yeah. right so yeah that was my uh you know my largest struggles was going from a steady paycheck to you know an inconsistent paycheck that's mm. one uh two um you know having that um you know that headspace that everything's going to work out but it never does so i was always stuck and you know doing 12 deals in my first year was fun but it wasn't like it was barely making what I used to make. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Just catching yeah. up the way you used to make. Got it. Yeah. 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 So I, you know, I mean, for everybody on the call, I was making at least a hundred grand a year as a sales manager and as a sales wow. rep. Easy. Before I came into real estate. So I was like, okay, you know what? This is, this shouldn't be hard. Everybody says, you know what? You can make 200, 300 grand a year. No problem. Mm. Right. I was like, yeah. all right, I can do it. I'm pretty yeah. good. No, it was barely 2017. We barely made enough um, to make the year go by. Oh, right. Wow. With, yeah. with 12 deals, you barely made the year go by because your level of expenses was already at that level. When you made 120 K, you had to spend a certain level and you have two kids and a wife to feed. So, right. you know, you, yeah. you did the bare minimum. So yeah. now 12 transactions coming through online leads and also open houses. Mm -hmm. um second year third year what did that look like 18 and 19 yeah 18 was actually still another solid year we did about 15 transactions um where i fell off the map was at the end of the year mm. uh, the last quarter i think i did one deal um and that was because my mom passed away at the end of 2018 Sorry, so my world that. just it froze yeah. she yeah. was my last parent on my side and uh so it was difficult it was definitely difficult, but it also uh, opened up my eyes because we had to have a conversation, um, Ash and I, to kind of say, okay, how do we not end up like this? How do we not end up living our entire lives? My mom, you know, when, when we first moved to Canada, uh, we were in Fiji originally, and she was making a dollar a day washing other people's clothes and washing other people's um, dishes. That was the life, right? And so when she came here, she was a seamstress making $3 an hour. Wow. Right. $4 an hour. So it was difficult because as you guys probably read in my bio, I'm one of eight kids. Yeah. Right. So to raise that many kids on her and my dad, 
was impressive. Let's put yeah. it that way. Absolutely. Very impressive, right? And so, you know, when my mom passed away, we were going through her home and cleaning up all the stuff and we realized she just left clothes behind. There was no massive um, amounts of money that was left over. There wasn't homes, there wasn't cars, none of that stuff. Mm. So it was a real big conversation. So, you know, the thought process for me was, okay, what do I do? Right. It's one thing for me to sit here and lull, but another thing to kind of figure out what to do. So we made a decision. I actually um, applied for my broker's license. Okay. Um, so I ordered my books and everything else in mm. November, December of 2018. Right. Um, and then this random girl text messages me in January oh. of 2019 by the name of Sarah Kwan, right? <laughs> totally random, right? And I'm like, okay. And so I just finished in January, I just finished interviewing Remax, Century 21, mm. and uh, McDonald Realty. Okay. Okay. You interviewed them for um, franchise opportunities, right? Oh. And and so I was very much in the headspace because I was already with Remax. I was like, I think we're going to end up at Remax. I said, Ash, that's yeah. 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 It's, it's just a branding thing, right? It'll be a teach chan, whatever that looks like. We'll do that and we'll stay yep. with Remax. Everything will be mm-hmm. fine. It was the most expensive out of the bunch. Yep. Right. You, you and I both know this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, then Sarah reached out through text message uh, on, I think it was Messenger, Facebook Messenger, she reached out on. Mm-hmm. and March 1 I was here done wow yeah quick decision because guys uh Atish reads numbers because he's analytical and he's very smart did all his research and quickly made the decision because it was the best financial decision he's ever going to make and to this day I think uh he still sticks with that decision 100 percent. Right? I mean those of us that are about making decision um if it feels right looks right Right. And it just makes sense to move yeah. forward. To unravel the decision is harder on you mm. than to make the decision. What a struggle. What a struggle yeah. when you try to unravel that. You've already made a decision. They're like, no, 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 wait. Let me just take a look at some other stuff that might contribute to this decision. Then it's just pain afterwards. Yeah. Just jump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. when you jumped, Atish, You went from 15 transactions, 2018 to uh, how many transactions? 2020. Uh, Oh, so 2020, I did, uh, we're at about 17. So it wasn't, yeah, 17. Um, So which wasn't too bad. Um, Majority of it was through online leads. Wow. uh, Just because I'm comfortable in that realm. Yeah. Uh, And and it's also a mindset thing, right? Which was, I remember my managing broker, I sat with him, my previous one, and he was like, do you know that 3% of the people that come through an open house will actually buy a property? And I went, really? 3%? Why am I doing open houses? And that year, I did three transactions with people from open houses. Like, literally, the guy walked in the door, looked at the house, and was like, can we meet tonight? I need to write an offer on this place. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. Right? And then, so for me, it was you know, I hear those things and it never sank with me. Like I never, it never came in and I went, oh yeah, I accept that. Right. But to a certain level, um, what I accepted right out of the gate, which was really interesting was it's hard to get friends and family to do deals with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Referrals from friends and family are difficult. Some of you probably struggle with that now. Um, But I really think through my story and I say, you know what, first transaction was a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So it, it's, again, I had to unravel that paradigm more than anything else. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so 2020, we did uh, 18 transactions. So 18. Which was, yeah. And then, you know, this, this past year, you hit Icon. Icon. Yeah. So congratulations. And so Thank how you. many transactions uh, what was that for you to hit Icon? 2021, we did 30. 30? Yeah. That's a big jump. It is. So was it an accumulation effect? You go, okay, so like first year, 12, 17, 18, and then 30. 30. Yeah. So what was the difference? Yeah. Besides the market, of course, because the market was good also in 2020. Minus yeah, 20. yeah. Right. Yeah, so it, it was a combination of a few things. One was I got better with online leads. So I got mm. very comfortable with the scripts. 
I got better with the follow-up. I got better with the cadence of engagement with those people. Mm. Okay. That was very important. So it wasn't so much the, Hey, so I think you're kind of looking at homes, you know, what are you looking for? Right. Um, I, you know, I use KV4 since KV4 was, a uh, before I learned about us and what we do as a community, mm. uh, KV4 was a big factor for me to move to EXP. Really? Yeah, it wow. was, it was heavy. Like I'd say probably 60% of my decision was on the tech. Okay. Okay. And that's because I'm a tech guy. Yeah. Right. That just makes sense to me. So anyway, I, I did that. And what I'd learned was I really started using KV4 more. So my online leads, my conversations are very direct. If you sit in on my room, right, you'll hear, it'd be like, hey, John, it's a teach calling from EXP Realty. I noticed you're looking for three bedrooms, two bathrooms in Vancouver East Side in Renfrew. You know, are you pre-approved for 1.3 million? Mm. Like, we don't, right. we don't waste, yeah, we don't waste right time. It. Right? Like, let's, you know, let, let's not, uh, let's not get too fussed into that stuff, right? Because yeah. there is intent from their end. Why would you not capitalize on that from your end? Wow. So don't beat around the bush, right? Get right to it. I'm yeah. Asking. Well, you're catching them, you know, at a, whether it's an awkward or an awkward time, it doesn't really matter. You're catching them. So capitalize on your opportunity. Four minute, yeah. Four uh. minutes of time you got with them, five minutes of time with them, because if you can catch them in the first 30 seconds, they'll stay on the phone with you for 30 minutes, mm. right? But if you're calling to say, hey, it's a teacher calling for me, it's free realty. So I noticed you're looking at some homes, you know, what are you thinking? What's your motivation? Oh. No, 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 let's just oh. get to it. And they'll, you know, they'll turn around and go, no, I'm not, I'm not free proof of that. Oh, then you start the dialogue. Then you follow the scripts. Wow. Right? Interesting. Yeah. And, and you just get to it. So that was a big shift for me. So that was one I got really comfortable with online leads. How, how, uh, what's the average turnaround for you for online leads? Uh, from, are you talking uh, about lead conversion? coming into conversion oh. to a transaction? Would you say for you when they do uh, convert? Uh, ooh. I'd probably say within 60 days, we are closed on an online lead. 60 days, guys. What I hear from industry is six to nine months. You yeah. see, there's a difference because Atish gets right to the point. Yeah. And how how fast do you call the lead when it comes in? Um, so in the beginning, I used to call every single day, like within five minutes, right? Mm. Um, what I found in 2020 and 2021, I put in better campaigns. Mm. So the engagement with the customer was more through text and email than it was through a phone call from Atish. Mm. Okay. But the interesting, yeah, there was a, um, there was a couple that I watched that were in uh, Missouri. There was a bunch of YouTube videos that they put together. They're rockstar EXP agents. Like if you, if you think about the Ozarks, right, which is in Missouri, these guys are doing like 140 homes a year as a couple. Wow. Right. If you look at the market, it's like selling 140 homes in New Westminster. That's right. what it looks like. It's a very small market, but they dominated the market. Hmm. And they dominated based on a couple of different strategies, but one of them was really pointed text messages. So I borrowed a couple of those text messages. Wow. Okay. Added, added them to my campaign. And, uh, you know, one of the camp one of the questions that uh, I put into my campaign is, you know what, 49% of homeowners need to sell before they buy. Right. We only help with the right information that you have. Do you need to sell before you buy? Let's just get to it. Right. Wow. And if they say yes, what do you think the next course of action is? Wait. I it's a teach. Uh, you know what? Calling them. I, I, I understand you need to sell your home before you need to buy. Let's get an evaluation done. Right. right? It, that's like my trigger point. That's where people move up the chain into my dialogue because th that, that's a serious indication that something needs to occur here and they're motivated. That's mm. my opinion. That's amazing. Okay, so text messages first. Because not yes. a lot of people pick up the phone anymore. Communicate by text message. When they respond, then you have an opportunity to call, to follow up with the call, not to do the first call. Because a lot of times people don't pick up. I don't pick yeah. up a lot of times because I know it's a telemarketer. Yeah. Right. But when you send a text, that's a real question. Then mm -hmm. and when they respond, then call. I think that's right. the best practice. Wow. Yeah. So, Tish, I mean, you're, you're obviously a wizard and, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give the crowd the information to contact you if they want to learn more about online leads or KV4. 
Sure. Um, man, you're just a master. But I, I do want to uh, cover a couple more things here. The market changing. Mm -hmm. Or the market has changed. And today, 50 basis points. Yeah. What are your thoughts going forward? Um, and what are your best... What's your best advice for an agent that's looking to make it in this market and thrive? Right. Um, so shifts that we did um, February, because we saw, we, we saw what was about to come in the market, right? We yes. saw March, April kind of come in and we, we kind of understand what it's going to look like over the next couple of months. Yeah. So I picked up uh, two new lead gen companies at oh. that particular time. You're okay. doubling down. He's doubling yeah. down, guys. Yeah, so we added, I added a total of uh, one, two, three. So we're at three lead gen companies currently. Whoa. Okay. Um, it's a couple of thousand a month that we put into it. But we know because, so here's the logic, guys, just so everybody understands this. And this is the one piece I learned in 2018 and 2019 around lead gen companies, which was when there's a lot of people, when the market's good, everybody spends money on online leads. So guess what happens? The cost of acquisition for an online lead goes up, mm. right? Because yeah. there's more of you guys competing with each other, right? That's just what it is. Yeah. But when the market slows down, guess what happens? They get Everybody out. Saves money, save money, save money, save money. Cost mm. of acquisition comes down dramatically. Ah. Right? And so we went and interviewed a bunch of different companies in February, brought on two more in March, Right. And our, our lead acquisition right now, we were spending 18 to 20 bucks a lead January, February. We're down mm -hmm. to like seven or eight bucks a lead right now. Wow. Right. So it makes the world of a difference. You just got to understand how the business works. Right. And I mean, if you if you really understand your business, your numbers, it, it makes your decision a heck of a lot easier. So um, I knew you were going to ask me what's the one thing, one piece of advice that I would give somebody. and. Um, you know, I, I think the thing that I would say to anybody that's, you know, whether you're in real estate for six months, whether you're in real estate for 10 years, get clear on who you are. Understand who you are. So are you just an amazing realtor? Be that person, 110%. But if you're a phenomenal businessman, business person, be that person, right? For me this year, and even last year, most of last year, it was important for me to sit down and figure out what does a really big business look like? So real estate now for me is definitely one of my income streams, okay? But we're striving to be able to build about eight more this year to be engaged in eight that make money, right? Um, so that's you know, something that I would just give anybody. Really get clear on who you are. Right. If you're a realtor for the rest of your life, do it and just 110% push. Right. Because what happens when that occurs is all the noise fades. Mm -hmm. Right. And when the noise fades, you, you actually don't have any, uh, any holdbacks, any excuses for not being successful. Is wow. that clear? Yeah, very clear. I mean, when you decide who you are, who you want to be, then everything just kind of comes together. Everything that you do, everything that you have is towards that being that you chose, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're a realtor, like I'm going to commit to being the greatest realtor that I can be, then everything is like so laser focused. Then you guys won't have this like FOMO on, oh, if I should do this, if I should do that, because you haven't chosen who you want to be. But once you choose, bam, everything comes together. Yep. So who do you choose to be as the market changes? The, the clearer you can get on that vision of who you want to be, the better it is for your business. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. 100%. And you know what? It gives you the one thing that you're looking for, right? You're looking for as much calmness as possible in here. Uh, right? So once you make that decision, just go. Just go. Just go. Yeah. Just don't, don't, don't waste your time on anything else. Right? And understand that you'll probably eventually change. But you might not change for a few years. You might not change for 10 years. That's okay. But get your head clear. Right. There's a lot of people I meet because um, we're starting to interview a lot of agents for attraction now. 
mm-hmm. and people are kind of yeah i'm thinking about doing real estate you know and, and i could i could see the head bob as they're doing it on the phone call right? yeah and i'm going you're not really in it you're not you're in not it. in get in get right? in or get out yeah you know I, I, what i learned during the pandemic if if, if things are like, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Correct. So make, make a decision real clear who you want to be, then everything would just come together nicely. Yeah. Even you, if it's a maybe, I think um, you and I were thinking, uh, we probably read that who not how. Um, yeah. yeah. But that was, I think even in that book, they were like, even if it's a maybe, put it in the no pile. Put it in the no pile. You got to get real clear. Clean your head up, guys. Yeah. Atish, yeah. how do we reach you? How do we send your referrals? Uh, so, you know what? Any EXP email. So my email is atish at westcoasthouses.ca. Uh, you're welcome to reach me um, on my cell phone. That's usually the best or text message. Um, you know, I'm not great on social media. Uh, I, I will, you know, I will admit that. It, uh, it's definitely something I want to strive towards. And that's why we have VAs for that type of stuff. I'm really striving on getting that cleaned awesome. up. But call or text or just, uh, you know, drop me an email. Uh, I'm here to help. Again, Atish, congratulations on all the success. Um, and, and again, thank you for all that you do for us. We got a lot of value from you today, man. Thank you for being here. Make it a great day, everyone. All the best. Thank you, Atish. Bye, Bye guys.